Good morning. Good to, good to see everyone out this morning. Aren't we blessed to be here? Beautiful day. About to have some good preaching. How, ble- how more blessed can you be, folks? Amen. I'm just proud to be here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Mike Berry, good to see you, brother. Would you lead us in prayer, please? <clears throat> Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. If everyone would stand and get your All American Church hymn, let's turn to page number 108. Hide thou me. This is your opportunity, folks, to have part in this service. Let's praise the Lord today. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my life in vain I'm tempted then to murmur and of my love complain but when I think of Jesus and all he's done for me then I cry, O oh, rock of ages, hide thou me. O oh, rock of ages, hide thou me. No
control my help in time of danger my strong defense is he oh thou blessed rock of ages hide thou me oh rock of ages hide thou me no other refuge have I but thee in life's dark veil I wander far far from thee then I cry That's a, that's a beautiful song. Yes it, is. yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's good to have everybody with us today. If you're visiting first time, we'd like you to raise your hand and we'll give you a card and let you fill it out. Drop me a plate and it passes in a little while. Okay, and a hand right there. Hand back here in the back. All right, anybody else? First time. We're glad to have you. All right, let's see. Hand over here. Where was the hand over here? Somebody? Yes. Where are you from, sir? Minnesota. All right. How do you like it down here where it's hot? Amen. <laughs> All right. Good to have you. Good to have you. All right. In the center here, somebody. Yes. Florida. All right. What are we doing Come, talking about being hot? She's from Florida. Good night. Well, good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have every soul that's here. One thing you need to know. That the Bible said, by the grace of God, he should taste death for every man. Amen. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Christ did not die for you. He died for us all, folks. Amen. That atonement is universal for everyone that would believe. Well, good to have you. Make yourself at home. We'll meet again this evening, 6 o'clock, for the evening service. You all keep that in mind. This coming week, Hanukkah is coming up, and that's a big holiday in Judaism. And this, Lord willing, this coming Wednesday night, I'll be talking about it. I'll be making some comparisons, some things that's important for us to understand. You'll be amazed at how much of our roots go right smack back into Judaism, folks, back into the Bible and what they call the Tanakh. And we'll be talking about that this Wednesday. Brother Chad Udi is with us today. Fine young man, good preacher. How many has never heard him preach before? Good night, folks. Half the crowd here, so well. Good, and let's, uh, you'll like him. All right, well, okay, we'll meet again Wednesday, this evening at 6, and Wednesday at 7. Okay, God bless you folks. Amen. Young folks, coming up and preaching, praise the Lord. I'd like to invite the choir up. We'll be singing out of the folder today, page number 57, How Great Thou Art, All That Will Come Sing.
you would stand and get your All American Church hymn, we'll turn to page number 307. Let's do the first, third, and last verse. First, third, and last verse. <clears throat> Praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, find the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, find the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who hath borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive. heart with thy love be rekindled with fire from above hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again amen <clears throat> as the choir comes down you can be seated Lord bless you Let's have the ushers come up here, then we'll take up the morning offering. While they're on their way, I saw in the news this morning where they have used a stem cell to heal type 1 diabetes. Now, type 1 diabetes is where the pancreas shuts down completely. That's what my wife has. The stem cell is a cell before it's specialized. It can become anything. Embryonic stem cells uh, 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 research has been one of the biggest... Uh, controversies in the country because an embryo is the child, baby, and its development. I don't know where the stem cell came from because there are other ways to get stem cells, but it's a remarkable thing. Not only the knowledge that God has given us, the Bible said in the book of Daniel, the last days knowledge shall increase. Amen. Folks, that is knowledge. Amen. That is immense knowledge. When you break the DNA code, find out how your cell develops and how it works and sends messages, you're dealing with something that is way above us. It could not have developed on its own. It shows you the hand of the Creator. And I thought I'd mention that to you because some of you may be type 1 diabetics. Pray about it. We've got a bunch of type 2. Type 2 diabetics is far more than type 1. But type 1 is the worst. And uh, so you please pray about this. God may use this for, for His own glory. Father... Thank you that we can come together in your house today for the wisdom you've given us. You say if we act lack wisdom to ask of you, oh God, who are we? And who are we to shake our fist into heaven and say we are what we are by our own power? We're here today to give you glory, Lord. We live because you live. I breathe because you breathe. My soul came from you. And Father, I pray that you bless everyone in this house today. Bless them, Father. Speak them, Lord. Touch them with thy divine presence. In Jesus' name, amen.
until then. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here today. Brother, Brother Van Caldwell and Caleb Wilson be singing for us this morning. He began to preach 
He said in the wilderness the children had nothing to eat. Oh, but manna from heaven fell down at their feet when they were dry and thirsty in a foreign land. Living water came forth from just a rock in the sand. Those three Hebrew children, they were thrown in the flame. And the fourth man appeared, he even called him by his name. And the man and the water and the man are all the same. If you're still confused, let me say this real plain. He said, that was me. It was me. Ain't I the one you left back there on Calvary? It was me. He said, who do you think hung the stars in the skies? Who do you think turned this day into night? Who made the flowers and who made the trees? Who made the sun and the moon and the seas? And who gives a life to all who believe? Thing made the blind man to see who made this very air that you breathe, who defeated death and won the victory. It was me, it was me, and I the one who died for you on Calvary. It was me. That road, folks, is there at Emmaus. That's what he's singing about. It's there. It's 2,000 years old. If you ever go to the Holy Land, don't miss Emmaus. You can walk on the very road that he walked on 2,000 years ago. Amen. God bless you, brethren, both of you. Brother Chad Udy's going to sing, uh, preach for you. You can sing, too, if you want to, brother. Whatever God puts on your heart. <laughs> Amen. Come on up here. I'll forget if you move around. I know we got you plugged up. Thank you, Pastor. All right. God bless you. He was talking about singing. I was thinking somebody misinformed a preacher this morning. <laughs> they go, I'm not going. I'm a, a crowd this size. I sure enough ain't gonna sing. Uh, but it's a joy to be here, and I appreciate the good singing, and I uh, appreciate uh, the Lord this morning. And I appreciate the good Sunday school hour and, uh, and just the good truth. And I don't know if I'm doing this right or. And uh, I sure did enjoy uh, the dear brother this morning in Sunday school. And uh, it's just been a joy to be here uh, already. Hear the good singing, the choir, and, and uh, we pray for you often. And uh, I love your preacher. And I thank God for him. And, uh, and just, uh, I was telling somebody a while ago that you'll never uh, understand or uh, never, never realize just the, the lives that's been touched uh, through Brother Lawson in this church and the ministry. And, uh, and I thank God for you. And, uh, and I do appreciate you. And I'm hoping this thing will get going away for just a minute. Put it down. All right. How about that? We'll get it figured out in just a minute. All right, I want you to be taking your Bibles to be finding the book of Matthew this morning, the book of Matthew, chapter number 7. The book of Matthew, chapter number 7. And when you find your place, if you're willing and able, we'll, we'll ask you to stand. And we'll honor the reading of the Word of God, Matthew, chapter number 7. And give you the thought the Lord has laid upon my heart, Matthew, chapter Number 7, I want you to find verse number 13. Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 13. Matthew 7 and verse number 13. I thought to myself this morning, um, I'm, I'm hoping we didn't eat too much turkey. I might not preach too long this morning. We, we all foundered on turkey today. Everybody lazy on uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving. We got a lot to be thankful for, and I appreciate the good... Uh, the good week we've had, and I pray uh, that you had a good Thanksgiving. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 13. Matthew chapter number 7, and verse number 
13. If you love your Bible this morning, would you let it on by saying amen? amen. The Bible says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want to preach with the help of the Lord this morning. I want to preach on this thought. Now I'm preaching on not everybody is going to heaven. Not everybody is going to heaven. Father, I do love you this morning. I pray you add your blessing to the reading of thy word. I pray, God, you give me an unction to preach with. I pray for a fresh touch and a fresh anointing, Lord. I recognize I stand where no man ever dare stands by himself, Lord. There'll be no preaching unless you do the preaching today. So I pray, God, do through me what I don't have the ability uh, to do within myself. Bless your people now. I pray for that one that may be among us today, Lord, that uh, the reality of the matter is they're traveling the wrong path this morning. And regardless of what the world has told them, God, the reality is they're going to end in a wrong destination. And I pray uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost of God, we would you open their eyes and may they see themselves for who they are, their sin for what it is, but not only that, may they see you for the Savior that you are and may they run to you, trust you, place their faith in you and be forever changed. Thank you for this good church. Thank you for the good pastor. I pray God your hand will continue to be upon them in the days ahead. We love you and we thank you ahead of time for what you're about to do. It's in Christ's high and holy name I do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for standing. You can be seated this morning. Here in Matthew chapter number 7, if you're a Bible studier, you'll know that we are uh, coming to the end in that of the, uh, or the conclusion, if you will, uh, in that to uh, the greatest sermon that's ever been preached. It's known as the, as the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we call it the Sermon on the Mount because the Bible says in chapter number 5 of the book of Matthew uh, that the Lord Jesus went up in uh, to a mountainside and he went up into a mountain after after seeing the multitudes and uh, from chapter number 5, chapter number 6, and chapter number 7, uh, we find the record that the Lord preached on that mountain, the sermon uh, that the Lord preached on the mountainside that day. And never has there been a sermon preached like the sermon uh, that was preached here in the text. It is the greatest sermon that's ever been preached, uh, preached by the greatest preacher that's ever uh, preached. Uh, not only is the sermon in itself a masterpiece, but uh, the one that was doing the preaching uh, no doubt was in a league all by uh, himself. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in verse number 28 of chapter number 7, uh, the Bible says that as he ended these sayings or uh, as he concluded the message, the Bible says that the, uh, the people were astonished at his doctrine uh, for he taught them as one having authority and not as uh, the scribes. In other words, there was something different about this preacher. Uh, there was something something different about this message. Uh, there was something that even the people that were standing by that day, uh, they recognized there's something special about this. Uh, there's something unique about this. Uh, there's something different about this. Uh, you understand they were hearing something they ain't never heard before. Uh, they were seeing something uh, they ain't never seen before. Uh, there was something uh, special uh, in the message and uh, the messenger. Never a preacher preach like this and never a sermon preach like the sermon on the mountain. Here in the text this morning, the Lord Jesus is dealing with the issue of eternity. Might I say by way of introduction, but might I say that eternity this morning is very real. Amen. Amen. Eternity is real. You understand that eternity, uh, it's not just some idea, it's not just some myth, it's not just some, uh, some fairy tale or some figment of our imagination, uh, but the reality is eternity is sure and eternity is certain and eternity is absolute. Uh, it is a fact. Uh, this idea today that life ends uh, uh, when a person stops breathing and uh, that's just all there is and uh, it just, it's just finished 
message just ends there and, and your soul no longer exists, may I say, uh, that's a false idea. Uh, that's a false narrative to the reality uh, and the truth of the matter. Uh, the Bible says it like this. It's appointed unto man who uh, wants to die and after this, it doesn't stop uh, at death, but rather there is an after this. There, uh, there is a afterlife. There is a life after death. You understand this morning uh, when you die, uh, life is you're going to exist somewhere. Are you going somewhere? And may I say nothing this morning should be of more importance to you and I. Nothing should be more concerning. Nothing should be more intriguing, more interesting to you and I. And nothing should we be more certain of than where we will spend eternity when we die. You understand people exhaust themselves. They'll spend money. They'll go here. They'll go there. You know, do taking care of things that uh, that is important to them all the while. Uh, their eternal estate uh, is just pushed aside and they figure in their mind somewhere uh, that it'll just work itself out. But I'm here to tell you this morning uh, eternity is real. You better know that you know that you know you're going to go somewhere, friend, and you better know where you're going to spend eternity. So that's what I want to deal with just for a few moments this morning. I'm preaching on not everybody goes to heaven. By the way, I thought of it like this as I was studying the text last night and I was in my prayer time. If eternity is a concern to you, and if eternity is interesting to you and, and you're, you're moved enough this morning to ponder the idea and to, uh, to reflect on the fact uh, that, you're, that you're interested in knowing where you're going to spend eternity, then wouldn't it be wise to hear the one that created eternity? Wouldn't it be wise to listen to the king of eternity? That's what I want to do for just a moment this morning. Here in the text, he's dealing with the issue of eternity. Number one, I want you to notice the number of paths that he gives us. The number of paths. Notice he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go therein at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Here in the text, the Lord Jesus is very clear. He says that there is only two gates. There is the straight gate, and then there is the wide gate. He says there is only two ways. There is the, the narrow way, and then there is the broad way. He says that there are only two destinations. There is uh, the destination of destruction or hell, uh, and then there is the destination of life and, uh, or heaven. And there are two crowds in the text. There are those on the broad way, and then there are those on the narrow way. There's the few and then there is the many. Notice this, there are not three options in the text. There are not, uh, you know, five choices, ten choices, or, or unlimited options that you can choose this or that. But Jesus is very clear, there's only two. There's this way and then there's that way. There's this road and there's that road. There's this gate and there's that gate. And there's that destination and then there's that destination. Therefore, you are either one or the other. You're either on this road or you're on that road. You're either on the broad way or you're on the narrow way. It's one or the other. Uh, one road leads to hell and destruction uh, while the other road leads to heaven and life everlasting. Uh, could I take a time out and say this and I'll hurry along, uh, but I want to say not only is the Bible uh, very clear in that of eternity, uh, but it is also very clear that there is only two eternal uh, estates or destinations. Uh, you understand uh, that when you die in your heart, uh, beats for the last time and, and, and blood ceases to flow in your body and no longer is there a pulse going to be able to be found and breath uh, uh, ceases to flow through your lungs. Uh, may I say that when that day comes, uh, you're going to step off into eternity. Uh, you'll abide at one or two destinations. Uh, you'll either go to heaven when you die or you'll go to a place that the Bible calls hell. Uh, you understand this morning, uh, there is no in between. Uh, there is no uh, uh, 
another option or another door. I look up in here, friend. Uh, you ain't coming back as a cow. Uh, you ain't coming back as a monkey. Uh, you're not coming back as some soulless creature. Uh, no, 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 friend. Uh, you will exist in eternity somewhere. Uh, one or two destinations. Uh, there are uh, no other uh, no other alternatives. Uh, now, I know this morning, I understand this morning, uh, there are too many in here today. Uh, this is elementary. Uh, this is fab. Uh, you know, just a, uh, the foundation. I mean, this is fundamentalism. We understand the text and, and we understand what I'm preaching this morning. I know that I'm preaching to the choir. I know this is not some foreign language uh, that you ain't never heard about. I know y'all was uh, raised on this kind of preaching. You've heard it all the days of your life. Uh, you know uh, that this book ain't just some book off a shelf. Uh, you know it's the absolute word of a holy God. Uh, you're settled on the fact uh, that Jesus is very clear about eternity. You ain't even questioning uh, what I'm telling you this morning. Uh, but may I say that we're living in a world today. Uh, they don't see it like you and I see it. Uh, they don't hear it like you and I hear it. Uh, they don't understand it uh, like you and I understand it. Uh, for many today, they become so deceived. Uh, they become so uh, blinded, so mixed up, so messed up uh, with the philosophy of men and the self-righteousness of hypocritical religion and the emotions and the feelings of uh, certain individuals. Uh, they've come to the point to now uh, that the preaching that I'm doing this morning, uh, it's viewed as being absurd. It's viewed as being a ridiculousness and, and ludicrous and, and, and they just cast it aside as it's just some idle tale or uh, some fairy tale that uh, that really does not exist. Uh, do you realize this morning uh, that for the majority of the population uh, they don't even believe in a heaven and they don't even believe in a hell. Uh, they don't even believe in eternity altogether. Uh, there's a crowd that will believe in heaven and not hell uh, but we're living in a day where now the majority is getting to the point they don't even believe in eternity altogether. Uh, that it's just is what it is. Uh, you don't believe me you look around and you watch somebody die and you'll see this R.I.P. Everybody wants to post R.I.P. Uh, rest in peace. And, and you say, where'd that come from? I'll tell you where it came from. It came from Hollywood and that crowd and some guy come along one day and, and you know what they're saying? They're saying rest in peace as though they're, they don't even they don't even exist. They're just asleep somewhere and never to awaken again. Uh, but you hear me in him well. Uh, the only rest you'll ever find it's when you enter into the haven of rest. Uh, the only peace you'll ever find it's when you make peace with Almighty God. There is no peace anywhere else and there is no rest anywhere else. Uh, you will step off into eternity and you're going to abide at one or two uh, destinations. Uh, while I'm on it, might as well hit it as well. Uh, we're living in a generation. Uh, everybody wants to talk about heaven. Everybody wants to believe in heaven and they don't want to talk about hell uh, because hell don't exist. Uh, but you hear me just as real as this road is. Uh, Jesus says this road is just as real. As real as that destination is, uh, Jesus says this destination uh, is just as real and just as real as heaven is this morning. Hell, friend, is just as real. I know we don't like preaching about it no more. I know we don't like talking about it no more. I know we like, I don't like hearing about it no more. Uh, but you hear me and hear me well. Uh, hell's a real place and real people uh, really die and they really go there. Uh, you better heed to the preaching and what I'm telling you this morning. Eternity is real this morning. There's a lot you can be mixed up about. There's a lot you can be confused about. But eternity better not be one of them. You better be absolute. You better be sure of this. I see the two paths. But secondly, I see the impossible outcome. Here's where I'm wanting to get this morning. Notice that he says, the broad way is that which leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. If you're on the straight and narrow way, the Lord Jesus says you're going to arrive at a certain destination. Amen. That being life, that being life everlasting. If you're on the broad way, you too are going to end up in a certain destination, that being destruction, hell, fire, and damnation. Watch this now. 
Jesus is very clear. You can't take this path and end up at this destination. Amen. Nor can you take this path and end up at this destination. But this path is going to lead here and this path is going to lead there. It's just as true as if I leave the church this morning and I were to get on I-75 out here and I were to head south. Regardless of where I'm wanting to go, the fact of the matter is, here after a while, I'll end up in Atlanta, Georgia somewhere. If I were to get on I-40 and head out west, then whether I want to go out west or not, the fact of the matter is, it ain't going to take me but, uh, but a few hours here after a while, I'm going to end up in Nashville. It don't matter if I was wanting to go to Florida. If I take I-40 west, I'm going to end up where that road leads. This is the great deception. This is the greatest false message that I do believe we are facing in our world today is that somehow, some way, for many today, they believe that they can take this path and end up over here. Well, they can take this path and end up over there. I wondered as I was studying the text this the, uh, uh, yesterday evening, I was, I was looking at the text and I looked around in our world today and I thought to myself, why in the world would so many want to get on this broad way? Why in the world would so many choose to travel on the broad way? That leads to destruction instead of the path that leads to life Amen. everlasting. Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because nobody in their right mind, nobody in their right mind, I mean, you think about it, nobody in their right mind would say, oh yeah, I want, I want this road when I know it leads to hell. Nobody, nobody wakes up and says, boy, I'd like to go to hell today. Nobody wakes up and says, yeah, give me destruction. Give me hellfire. Give me tormenting. Give me, uh, give, me, give me pain. Give me weeping. Give me the gnashing of teeth. That's what I want. And nobody in their right mind says that. The only reason they would choose that path is if they really believe they're going to end up somewhere other than where this book says it's going to take them. That's why when you go to a funeral today, it don't matter how the individual lived. It don't matter what they did, what they believed. Uh, there's always going to be some talk there about them being in heaven, about seeing them again. They're, they're, they're with Jesus now. Not if they was on the broad way. And yet so many today are traveling down the broad way. Many are choosing the broad way over the narrow way. Why is that? They really don't believe they're going to end up where the book says they're going to end up. I'm going to tell you why so many are choosing the broad way today. Number one, it's because it's appealing to the flesh. Amen. You see, you get on the broad way, I mean, you live it up, friend. You can party, you can love your sin, enjoy your sin, and, and the things of the flesh. And uh, You understand over here on the broad way, there ain't no rules, there's no regulations, there's, uh, there's no standards, there's no, it's just anything goes. Whatever you want to do, however you want to live, I mean, uh, you got plenty of room over here, uh, you can enjoy yourself on the broad way. It's appealing. It's appealing to the flesh and to the mind and, and your sinful nature. It is attractive. And number two, because in their mind they don't believe that road is going to end up where the book says it's going to end up. And just to prove what I'm preaching to you this morning, I'm not crazy, I've not lost my mind, I'm, I, I'm not out of contact. I like how the brother said in Sunday school this morning, he said, use the rule of 20. 20 verses before and 20 verses after. If you've got a question, I get you a good context. And so uh, to prove to you this morning, I ain't just picking a couple of verses and preaching it out of context, I, how I ended up in my conclusion that a lot of people traveling on this road are really banking that it's going to end up somewhere other than what the book says, notice what the Lord says in the very next verse. Verse 15, what's he say? Beware of false prophets. He's just got through dealing with the issue of eternity. He's just got through telling of the reality of eternity. And the very next verse, 
The very next words out of his mouth is, but beware of false prophets. Why? Because a false prophet will preach a message that's contrary to the true message. A false prophet will preach a message that goes against the real message and the real prophet. And you hear what I'm telling you this morning. We're living in a world that is filled uh, with false prophets preaching false messages. Uh, this message today uh, that our society has embraced is uh, just live how you want to live. Uh, do what you want to do. Uh, be what you want to be. Uh, go where you want to go. Uh, say what you want to say. And in the end, it'll be all right. Uh, you can still go to heaven when you die. Uh, you, can, you can come over here and travel down the Broadway. Uh, you understand? They got churches over yonder on the Broadway. Uh, they got preachers over there on the Broadway. Uh, they say, hey, uh, you know, to the world, they say, well, uh, you know, if you want to go to heaven when you die, just be good to your neighbor. Uh, you understand? They're good to the neighbor on the Broadway. Uh, you can go to church on the Broadway. Hey, look up in here. Uh, you can get baptized on the Broadway. You can go to church on the Broadway. Uh, you can hear preaching on the Broadway. But at the end of the day, look up in here, friend. you still on the Broadway and when the Broadway is going to end up in the destination it's not going to take you where you're longing to go Amen. it's the Broadway Amen. it don't matter you sing in the choir you're still on the Broadway <laughs> It don't matter you got baptized, joined the church, put your name on the roll and you either in here on Sunday morning you're still on the Broadway <laughs> live how you want to live do what you want to do. That's why you're seeing all these things take place today that, you know, you, you, you want to live a lifestyle of homosexuality and, and be a Christian. Well, that's okay. You can just come over here on the Broadway. We can do that on the Broadway. You don't have to, you don't have to, it don't matter. I mean, you can dress how you want to dress, look how you want to look, talk how you want to talk. I mean, I mean it's, you know, it's the Broadway. Anything goes. You cannot travel the Broadway and end up in heaven. Hear me now. Not everybody is going to heaven when they die. Thirdly, I see there's two paths. I see the impossible outcomes, but then I see the difference in the crowds. There's a difference in this, in the two crowds in the text. Notice this. It's not what they look like. It don't even tell you what they look like. It's not how much money they got. Don't even mention their worth. It's not got anything to do with the color of their skin. It don't even mention that. It has nothing to do with their age, whether they are young or whether they're old. It don't even mention that. You know what the difference is in the crowd here in the text? One's on the broad way. One's on the narrow way. And in reality this morning, there's just two categories of where men will fall into. Just two categories. I understand we're living in a world they've got all kinds of classifications. They've got all kinds of different categories that, uh, that you would identify in. Uh, there's the young category, the old category, the city category, the country category. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, white, black, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Yankees and rednecks and, and popular and, and, and the nerdy crowd. You've got the educated crowd and the uneducated. I mean, there's all kinds of different classifications and there's all kinds of different categories but when it all comes down to it, there's really just two. They're saved and there's lost. There's those on the narrow way and there's those on the broad way. Uh, there are those who have been to Calvary. Uh, there are those that's been by the way of the cross. Uh, there are those that's been washed in the blood. Uh, they've been redeemed. Uh, they've they, they, they placed their faith, surrendered their all unto the Lord Jesus Christ and, and His redemptive work on Calvary. And then there are those who have rejected the gospel. They've yet to submit. They've yet to surrender. There is a difference in the crowd. Watch this now. The difference in the crowd on this road and the crowd on that road. By the way, let me say this. You want to you wanna do a self-examination? I know maybe you've been sitting there this morning and you think, I wonder what road I'm traveling on. 
Maybe you're not certain about what road you're crowded. You may tell you just a good indication to tell you where you're really at this morning. Look at the crowd you're a part of. Look at the crowd you run with. Look, look, look at those who, uh, who, you, uh, who you identify with. You understand? You understand? You look at that crowd on the narrow way. It's a different crowd than the crowd on the broad way. I mean, I mean that crowd on the narrow way, you understand they're not there because they, 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 they enjoy it. I thought about this. I was, I was meditating on it last night. Who likes to drive on a narrow road? And nobody enjoys that. You like them to go wide roads where you got plenty of room and there's room for air. I mean, it's a narrow road. You head down through air pulling a trailer or driving a big truck. I mean, you better be on your game. You better be focused. You better be uh, on target because you get off to the right or left. I mean, it causes you a great deal of Nobody enjoys that. Uh, but you understand that crowd uh, that's on that narrow way, they're not there because they enjoy the road itself. I'm going to tell you why they're there. They're there because they love Jesus. Uh, they're there because they, uh, they, they, they love the book and, and they love the blood and, and they're thankful to God uh, for what He did for them uh, on, the, on behalf of uh, their, their sinful and nature. That's why they're there. You know why this crowd over here on the Broadway, why they're traveling down that road? It's because they enjoy their sin and they love their sin more than they love God. They love their beer more than they love righteousness. Uh, they love uh, their dope and their, and their partying and, and their adultery and their, uh, their fornicating. They love that more uh, than they love the word of God. Uh, there's a difference in them crowd. Uh, look, uh, I, can, I can spot them out. Uh, I mean, I get to go places and preach and I preach to a lot of different faces and I can tell. Uh, I'm not, not saying I'm a prophet and I'm telling I know uh, everybody's a uh, uh, spiritual condition but I can know, I can testify to this and I'm sure your preacher can as well. I know what it's like to stand up and I know what it's like to hear a choir. I get to singing about the cross and get to singing about the blood and get to singing about uh, the glory of God and say, hey, I could pick a text this morning, uh, preach on any of that stuff. And for some of you, it wouldn't move you one little bit. I mean, you wouldn't get happy. You wouldn't give a holy grunt for nothing in the world. Uh, yet yesterday you was drinking your beer over here at Neyland Stadium and a hooping and a hollering. Oh, why is that? Because you're on a different path. Oh, but then there's that crowd. I mean, hey, they might not have a lot of friends and they may, be, uh, they, they may not enjoy the things of this world. Oh, but I'm talking about you open that book. Oh, you get to singing about the blood and preaching about the blood. They can't contain themselves. Oh, there's something begins to move on the inside of them. What is that? i tell you what it is. It's the Holy Ghost of God. Oh, why? Oh, what's the deal? i tell you what it is. They're on a different path. And this crowd is. They're on the narrow way. There's a difference. I thought of it like this. You understand to the world, they look at what's going on in here and they call me crazy. That preacher's lost it. I mean, he's one of them holy rollers. He's just one of them, uh, you know, fundamentalists that just, I mean, they're just so narrow-minded. They're just so narrow. I mean, they're just, they're just out there. That's right. I used to get offended when they called me narrow-minded. Now it's a compliment when I read Matthew 7. <laughs> Thank you. It means I'm on the right track. But they look at it and they look in here and I say, man, that's crazy. And they don't want to be here. I dare say in a crowd this size, there's somebody sitting in here this morning, truth be told, you don't want to be here. You'd much rather be somewhere else. But that bunch on that narrow road... <laughs> This is our Super Bowl for the week. Yeah. Huh? I mean, this is what it's all about. We make it through today. How about Monday morning? We're looking forward to next week. Oh, we can't get, we can't, we can't get. I mean, I mean, this is our crowd. This is our, this is our haven of rest. This is what we look forward to. This is what we enjoy. Why you, why you want to go to heaven when it's going to be a, full of a bunch of people like us? And you can't stand us down here <laughs> wanting to go to heaven with us. You know what heaven's going to be, don't you? It's going to be a lot of shouting, <laughs> a lot of praising God. <laughs> you don't like it down here. What makes you think you're going to like it up there? <laughs> huh? You on the broad way. The different way. Let me give you this and I'm done. I've got to hurry. I see the difference in the crowd, but I also see an invitation that was given. Jesus started the text. Notice what he said. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Never does the Lord say enter in at the wide gate. Never does he say travel down the broad way. 
He says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Here's the good news this morning. Regardless of where you stand spiritually with God, regardless of what path you're choosing or traveling down today, you don't have to take the broad way. You don't have to, you don't have to go uh, to hell when you die. You don't have to travel the broad way. You don't have to be in the wide gate. Jesus says, enter ye in the straight gate. He made it available. You understand? Uh, yeah, people say, well, I just, you know, it just, it's, it's not, not, my, not my choice, you know. Uh, he didn't have a choice in him. He had a bad daddy. He had a bad mom. No, 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 friend. Listen, if anybody uh, dies and goes to hell, it's because he chose to die and go to hell. Not because God sent him. Uh, you understand? Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, he came and made the ultimate atonement and he paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, so that every man, woman, boy, or girl, uh, they know, hey, uh, you, got a, you got a choice this morning. You can choose what path you want to take. It ain't something your mama can choose for you. Your daddy can't choose it. Your preacher can't choose it. It is the individual choice. Jesus says, enter ye in the straight gate. He made it available to all men. Whosoever will, let him come and be saved. I thought about this and I'm done if they want to get ready for a verse invitation. I thought about this. Notice he says a straight gate. I don't know how many y'all might have grown up on the farm or out in the country or anything like that, but I grew up on the farm and, and you can't just go through a, a gate just any kind of way. Especially if you're pulling something behind your truck. You got to get lined up. There's only one way. That wide gate, it don't matter. You can come in there sliding sideways. There's plenty of room you can fit through it. But you're going to go through that straight gate there's just one way. Huh? There's just one way. Look up in here, friend. You want to go to heaven when you die? There's just one way. There's not multiple ways. You'll not work your way to heaven. You'll not pay your way to heaven. If you die and go to heaven someday, it'll be because you went through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It only comes, you've got to go by the cross just like every man, every boy, every girl. There's not one way for one and another way for another. That's just one way. Jesus says, enter ye in. Get on the narrow way. Without a doubt, time's ticking away, friend. I'm watching them die left and right today. I was thinking, coming up the road, man, it seemed like used to years ago when I was a boy when somebody died, I mean, it was like a big deal. It seemed like it just didn't happen that often. Buddy, these last couple of years, it's just like... Another day, we begin to get so numb to it, so used to it. But you hear me now, every one of them people that's died, they're in eternity now. They're at one of two destinations. They're either in heaven or they're in hell. And it's by what road or what way they chose in this life. What way are you choosing this morning? Enter ye in straight gate. Come be saved. Get in this thing while the door is open. And let's go to heaven together. Let's go to heaven today. Father, I love you. I thank you for thy word this morning. I pray you're blessed during the invitation hour. Should there be one here today that does not know you? Lost and undone without God, I pray today would be the day they'd come. Get saved. Place their faith in you. Be forever changed. Enter in the straight gate. Get on the narrow way because the reality is not everybody is going to heaven when they die. I pray they get saved for it's everlasting too late. I sure do love you. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for Jesus. For it's in his high and holy name we do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Do you stand to your feet as they sing? If God spoke to you, why don't you come? 375 in the All-American Church Hymnal, just as I am. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I 
folks, it is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. You either come in by Christ or you don't make it in. There's no other way. Amen. Sing another verse, brother. Just as I am. Peter saw the man at the gate called beautiful. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. If you have the Son of God today, you have a treasure. Amen. It's worth more than silver and gold. It sure is. How many of you today, you know the Lord, you really know him. How many of you sell him for a million dollars? What's the price? How high could it go before you gave up? Just sold him. I don't think he would. I don't think money, silver, gold would ever buy him from you. He's yours and you're his. Amen. Forever. Let's sing another verse, brother. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fighting. Folks, I'm going to tell you what that is. If you've never heard it before, that's old-fashioned Bible preaching. <laughs> Amen. And as he said, there's a lot of places in this country that they've never heard that kind of preaching. Never heard it. But he'll be back again tonight, 6 o'clock, for the evening service. And we'd like to invite you back. And you can, you can be sure of this. You're going to hear the same type of old-fashioned preaching, preaching Bible-believing preaching. And that's the simplest thing to do. Just believe the Bible and preach what it says. Amen. Let's have a couple of men go to the back door and we'll take up an offering for this brother. I appreciate his ministry and I appreciate his, uh, his zeal, his sincerity. Believe me, he preaches what he believes. Amen. Better believe it. It comes from a heart of belief. And that's, that's so refreshing in this day of professional clergy. Amen. The professional clergy. Oh, yeah. All right. God bless you, folks. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you thank the Lord. That's the first thing he says about this generation, unthankful. Father, thank you for the word, for this brother, for his ministry. Your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you please. Bless them now in Jesus' name. Amen.